Hey guys, thanks for checking out this week's video. So today I thought I would do something a bit different, which is sharing my favourite art books with you guys. Now I am so into collecting art books, I have been for many many years. I have a bunch of them in storage, I'm even selling some ones that I've sort of grown out of, but I do love art books and I thought I would share which ones I still find useful today and ones that I use for inspiration. First up I have this one. Now this is The Artist's Complete Guide to Drawing the Head and it's by William L. Morgan. I am going to butcher names, I do apologise. You can find links below to all of the books that I mentioned here so if you want the specifics do check that out. Now this one first caught my attention. I've checked out so many different tutorials on how to draw the head and facial expressions. This one really caught my attention because the art is incredible. They are very talented. So it goes through the drawing materials and method, the principles, shadow shapes, light, the drawing process step by step, drawing the head, putting it all together, working with colour, yada yada yada. So it's a good all-rounder in terms of like if you're new to portraits it will go over all the materials that this person recommends. It even goes on about how to hold the pencil, you can see it's a very different grip to how some people would hold it. Tips on sharpening with blades. So let's get to the great stuff. Shadow shapes and edges. That's great. Love this explanation. Do you know what? I completely forgot where I ever heard this. Um, but whenever I'm doing those little dimples, the, the corners of the mouth, this is what I think of. And now <laughs> I'm glad I found out where I where I heard this. So I just think it's overall if you want to really improve faces, hair, I need to work on my hair more. And then it does go a bit crazy later on as you can see. You can buy a female model with a photo reference of a pig's nose, mouth and ears. So and then it does go on to painting very briefly. The colour wheel, colour intensity. Yeah I just think it's a great one to not only be inspired by but to get some great tips from. So that is my first book recommendation. The next book is one that I don't use often enough but I like to have it by my side just in case. Now that is Drawing Animals and I found this book and I thought it was great. It had great reviews and I do really like it. So it covers places to draw animals, keeping sketchbooks, drawing from photos and video. I like as well that in this it covers the line of action which you see this a lot in anatomy for you know human anatomy for people but not as often, or I haven't seen it as often in animals. Construction, step by step. Foreshortening and overlapping forms, that's really important. Perspective now. Oh, I thought this was really cool as well. So it shows you the different arms and legs of cows, horses, lions, dogs and humans. So you can sort of see how their bones are arranged differently, where the joints are, how they would bend, which I thought was kind of neat. Skulls too. And I'm sure, here you go, it focuses on specific animals. Camels, kangaroos, bears, dog. I think the dogs get a couple more pages. I do wish this was like had more examples of each animal, but that's just me being greedy. But I feel like this is a great resource to have, especially if you're interested in drawing animals. I don't draw animals often, but I want to get better at it. So this is the Weatherly Guide to Drawing Animals. Another one of my favorites. Now this one, I feel like every artist I speak to has a copy of this, and that is Framed Ink. This is all about composition. This is for visual storytellers. You don't have to be drawing comics to benefit from this. So it does cover some basic stuff. It tells you about the different types of shots. So like this massive landscape one is a long or a wide shot, medium shot, close up, extreme close up, the rule of thirds, which is incredibly important. You know, there's loads of different sort of theories on how to do composition. But I find the rule of thirds one of the easiest and I'll be honest it never fails. And then it goes over all these things and I feel like not everybody takes these into consideration. I'm just going to read a quick snippet of this bit here. It says we can also use lines to direct the eye towards a specific element in the panel. 
Besides the perspective element that we will mention shortly, lines can be anything from a tree branch, a powerful and elongated element of graffiti, a row of clouds pointing in a certain direction, or the imaginary one that links heads of different characters. So you can lead the eyes, you can also point them to things. You'll see that although these are wrapping around, they're also pointing to this house, they're pointing to each other. So lines are very important in work. And I think just the advice in this book is incredible. It even tells you about your lenses and then also what a shot would look like. It shows you a cafe in different scenarios, different times of day, different lighting. I think this is really clever that they have these tiny thumbnails that just do the silhouettes so you can get a better reading. Sorry for the changing in light. I've just realized the sun is kind of setting and it's a lot darker in here now. Oh yeah, that's a bit better. And I'll just quickly flick through the rest so you can get an idea. Negative space, order versus chaos, scale progression. Damn, I need to read this again. I need to go through the whole thing. Yeah, it's just, this is a great one. Ooh, the graphic novel. Comics and your page layouts, or on your speech and things, and last thoughts. This is, highly recommended and like I say not just for those who are doing comics but a lot of the advice and tips in it I feel like can be applied to paintings too. This would be probably one of my top three books to recommend out of everything. So yeah that's Framed Ink. Next one I'll be honest. Vanishing Point. Now you probably guessed it, it is a perspective to say for comics from the ground up, but you know, perspective is perspective whether or not it's in a comic. I will be honest though, I haven't seen many books on perspective, so I don't know how this compares to other ones, but this one has always got good reviews and like I say, I feel like it explains things very clearly. So it goes over the five types of perspective and then it breaks them down further. One thing I really like is the way this book's laid out and I know that's probably one of the least important things when getting a book, but for me, if it's like a huge wall of text, I just, I can't read it. I'm a very visual person, I don't know about you guys, but the way this is broken down and then you get these like little boxes. And then another thing is, so after it's taught you all this, then it says putting it into action which I like because I feel like a lot of people will teach you how to do something but then don't tell you how to apply it in a practical sense. Two point perspective and then again goes over everything and then put it into action, your two point action, three point perspective. But I feel like it's really clearly stated, the instructions are really clear, everything is nice and neatly sort of broken down and like I say then it also tells you how to put it into practice. And then it's got a tricks and troubleshooting section. Shortcuts and background fakes. Yeah, another one. Again, I think it's kind of self-explanatory. If you want to learn perspective better in a very clear and easy way, I definitely recommend the Vanishing Point one. Now this one is a bit unusual. It's called Elemental Magic. It's very white, so my camera's not picking it up too well. The Art of Special Effects Animation. The only thing I don't like about this book is that it is so bendy and because it's really long, it's kind of hard to store. Like the corners are all getting bent and um, yeah, but other than that, the content is great, which is what matters. This one I got, although, I mean, I studied animation at university and I did it for like two and a half years and then realized I don't like animation. <laughs> I love watching it and I have a huge respect for those who do it but for me personally I cannot do animation but I still love the visuals of it and one thing I felt was really lacking from tutorials and just general resources online was how to draw special effects, how to draw them in 2D and I stumbled across this book after speaking to an animator and he recommended I check out this book and so I did. So this is, you know, a river flowing and how it moves, how the water interacts with the rocks and how it swirls around afterwards. And then this side you've got like smoke and how the smoke moves and bellows. It covers a wide range of effects and although it doesn't go too in depth on the pictures, I feel like what it does cover is enough 
to get you started. So it just shows you the water flowing out of the bucket, the impact on the floor and onto the fire and the smoke coming up. And I just, I think that's really cool. That's something that I don't see a lot of tutorials on. And if you ever wanted to feature these sort of elements in an illustration or a painting, I find it really helpful. Right, this is the last example I will show, but it's great showing the impact of a ball into the water. Splushing in and then the water splashing. Sorry, I'm having to hold this at really funny angles. There we go. And this goes on for another few pages. So although this is meant for animators, I feel like it's a solid book to have in your collection if you like elements and adding that kind of stuff. Oh, and real quick, this is another book that I do recommend. This guy right here. Uh, I'll put a link to that one as well. This one I've never bought but at university they had several copies at my library and I used to get it out like every month. I would rent this out and this is really good for human anatomy. In fact I will overlay a preview from like Amazon you know the look inside preview thing. It explains an approach to drawing anatomy that makes you consider the movement behind it. You may or may not have had one of those moments when drawing or trying something new and you felt like something's just clicked and you see a huge improvement in your art because of it. I felt like I had one of those moments with this. It is one I recommend. So I will pop in a quick look while I'm yammering on just now. And one other one I am going to mention that I don't have anymore because I keep giving it away. That's right, I love this book so much that when I find another artist who loves art, <laughs> I'm like, just take this book, you need it, it's so good. And that is Colour and Light by James Gurney. And it is just about colour and light and how they work together. The only art book I have literally read every single word of front to back because every piece of information in it was so valuable. Check it out, guys. So those are the books that I would recommend for becoming better at art. I mean obviously it depends where you feel you struggle and where you want to improve but for me these books are still relevant today and I would highly recommend at least taking a look and seeing if it would be suitable for you guys. So now I'm going to move on to the inspirational books. First up, Camilla's book. You've probably seen her work before, she is incredible, she does pop surrealism. Now even though this I'm putting in the inspirational sort of section of my books that I'm showing today, she does include tutorials and walkthroughs and some amazing tips. So it's a bit about the genre that she paints in, where she finds her inspiration, tools of the trade. So here she goes over all of her supplies. It's not just a collection of her work and it's not just like a tutorial book, it is an insight to her thoughts on creating art as well, which I think is really cool. I mean, out of all the books I've got, this is the only one that takes that sort of approach. Blending, there's a chapter just like dedicated to blending, which is awesome. Painting pop surrealism, top 10 questions, ooh, oh, I need to reread this, my goodness. I just want to show you some of the step by steps, here's one. Just a quick tip here I want to read out so you guys can get an idea of what stuff to expect from this book. Lips should be a different shade of pink than the skin tone, so add in cooler or warmer tones of pink to the lips and do not use those in the rest of the skin. So it shows you how she starts out. Step one, they're all numbered and she says a bit about each of them. I think the information that she shares in this book is incredibly valuable. And she shows in a huge range as well, not just faces, but also some of like the animals and like this little creature. And the step by steps for that. So yeah, I would highly recommend this one. It's my first inspirational book recommendation. Next one, and oh my goodness, one of my favourites, The Art of Spirited Away. So a quick look at this. I haven't even got into it yet and it's already beautiful, isn't it? So there's a bit of an insight to the film and the, the sort of message behind it, which is really cool. Some sketches. 
More sketches of the characters. Oh, here, just look at this. Just look at this. How incredible. Let's zoom in. How amazing is that? Look at how nice the environments are. Oh, they're so beautiful. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Look at it. Look at it. It's so beautiful. And yeah, it just it goes through all of them. So it's the restaurant district. It covers a lot of the character design and then the different quarters and things. It takes you through key parts of the movie as well. The railway. Oh, digital animation. I forgot this was in here. But yeah, this is just one big old book of inspiration. Okay, so next is a huge inspiration for me. And that is Warcraft. I've got a few books on this. The Art of the Trading Card Game, Warcraft. Volume 1. Do you know what? I don't know if they ever made a second one. I hate dust jackets. What does it look like? Oh my goodness! Oh, shiny. Oh, it's so much better without its dust cover, but I worry this is going to get ruined. Oh, I guess I'll put it back on. It's so much better without it, though. Anywho, so you may or may not know that Warcraft has a trading card game as well. I don't play it personally, although I do have some. Right. <laughs> you can tell I play it. That's why these are still in packets. Please, let's open them. You know what, now that they're here... Let's see if we can find some more shinies real quick. ASMR. Pretty fucking cool. Actually, another one of you. It's a little bit shiny. And this one. Ooh, shiny. Shiny, shiny. And on the back it shows you the actual. Like I say, I don't play the game, I just love the art. And I love Warcraft and the lore and all that. Anyway, so <laughs> back to the video. So this is like a collection of a lot of the art. It shows you which packs are featured. There are a lot more packs than this. So I think this is I mean, it's volume one, so it's got to be some of the oldest art in here. And you know what I love? The one thing I really like about this is that it's all different styles, although it's all the Warcraft universe. It's, I mean, like, check this out, and then, you know, this is Leroy Jenkins, by the way, which is awesome. I always like trying to spot the ones that are... Hey, that's gouache. Gouache. I like trying to spot the ones that are traditional, particularly uh, oil. How good is this? It's art gem. This, by the way, is done in acrylic. How? Do you know what? I need an actual print of this. How amazing is that? I'll put in the, the name. It's Jim Murray. This is by that same artist. It's just an amazing collection. Obviously, this is for their trading card game, so they want it to be the best work it can be. And I really wish they'd bring out a volume too. Someone correct me if they have, but I'm pretty sure they haven't. And while on the topic of Warcraft, another one I find very inspirational is this. Now this is a little bit different. The World of Warcraft tribute. Various artists around the world who did fan art for it. The only thing that I will criticise is the book isn't that well made. The spine I don't think is going to last very long. You can already see that like this front page doesn't align properly. There were some reviews on this that it has fallen to pieces for some people. It has not yet for me but I don't pick it up and look at it too much because I'm worried it is going to fall apart. But I do love it because it's fan art it means there is a huge range of um, different styles and interpretations so I will take you, you know what, I'm going to start off with my favourite one which is near the front this one wow let's try zoom in there you go that's the name of the artist the deviant art they're from mexico i just love everything about it everything it's incredible so like i say it's fan art so you got some really cool stuff that's like really illustration based and this is cool as well like that 
I'm just going to skip through so you get an idea. And one cool thing about it as well is that it's different levels of skill between the artists. So like they haven't excluded anyone who's created fan art that is not at the same skill level as these because let's be honest, wow. But it is nice to see a good range. Oh, this one's pretty. And while I'm on the topic of these sort of collections, I used to only really enjoy getting these types of art books where they were collections of loads of different peoples. And so the next one is Exotic 7 to be specific. This is by Ballistic Publishing and they used to do a lot and they would do call for entries as well and you could enter for free and if you got featured you get a free copy sort of thing. I don't know if they still do it. They did stop for a while. I don't think they've started back up again. But they did all sorts, it was expose. And then they had these ones that are like Diatis that are design, that are tutorial books and stuff. I've had a look at these before myself. They're all really good books. So like I say, this is a collection of loads of different artists from all around the world. And like I say, it's great when you get the books that have collections of different artists, it means that there are varying styles. Right, so I'll do a quick flick through so you can get an idea. Wow, that's beautiful. I had to stop and take a look at that. Ooh. Cool. Yeah, so it covers a wide range of topics and artists. So that's always a great one just to pick up. Flicking through these kind of books really helps give me inspiration when I feel like I don't know what to draw. Put the link to the Ballistic website so you can have a look at their catalogue and what other ones they do. Okay, now I'm on to my last book, last but not least, because this was the first ever art book I purchased ever. I can't even remember how old I was, but it was the first time I ever saw concept art just art for video games and things like that and it was so inspiring it's what set me on my path to creating art um disclaimer it has been badly damaged while i was still living at home with my parents and someone i don't know who still don't know who no one's owned up to it someone spilt a cup of tea or coffee or something and has ruined the back few pages. The whole book is warped the whole way through but it has stained the few pages at the back which is a shame. I did look originally to get a new copy but at the time they were it sort of like stopped selling it over here and it cost a fortune to buy a new one so I've kept it all these years even though it is badly stained. So for the reveal da -da 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 -da. now I fell in love with Final Fantasy series and I saw this in my local game shop and just bought it. Look at the state of the buggling, it's so sad. But I felt like it's still worth showing because the front of the book is the most important part for me. So it goes over all the main characters, some of the initial concepts and things, non-playing characters. So all the character designs, I love that they put this height thing in as well and bear in mind this is the first time I ever saw like concept art and all this kind of stuff so I thought it was really cool that they show you like different angles and like with their arms cut off, I was like why would you cut their arms off in the picture, they're not armless and like them showing the height and stuff and I just thought wow, people do this for a living, this is incredible. Creatures too, here we go, environments. So this is what I thought was really interesting. So it shows you the line work of some of the places. Let me skip ahead to uh, check this one out. That's pretty cool, right? I mean, it's all rough, but it's also technical as well. I was just in awe of this, which was my favorite one. The tree. They just crammed so much art into this. If you're a lover of Final Fantasy IX, look, here, check this out. Look at how detailed that is. That is just crazy, right? My poor damaged book. <laughs> really need to buy a new copy. 
even after all these years and with it being so damaged, I still get a lot of joy out of this. Monsters and stuff too. I thought this was cool as well. You've got your equipment swords, short swords, staves, spears, claws, buds, flutes. I thought, oh, so cool. Look at how this is where it starts to get really damaged. Ooh. Yep. The other thing that is a shame is that, yeah, there's this little art gallery at the back of the original sort of concepts. They're all damaged. Yeah. So this was the start of my art book collection. A very sad looking <laughs> book these days, but one of my favourites that still sits on my shelf. So that about wraps it up. I hope you found this video interesting and do let me know in the comments below whether or not you have any of these art books, which one is your favourite or if any of these are on your wish list. Or better yet, let me know which books you think are missing from this collection and that you think I need to add to my wish list. So if you like this video, don't forget to give it a like and if you want to see more then hit that subscribe button. Until next time, bye!